How cute are those two? Oh my goodness. That is Matthew Kachuk and Jason Tatum. If you know that they were high school. Yes, baby. Elementary school friends are, and check out the kid in the back, the grown, he was also in the bus picture. But there is an adult in that picture where they recreated it. That is All right, that's awesome. really cool. All right, so both guys coming off championships. And so their hometown said, yo, bring your hardware with you and throw out the first pitch Sunday as we hosted the Dodgers. And that's exactly what they did. How cool is that? That's very cool. Right? Those two guys, friends that long and two of the best at what they do. All right, how, how about Clayton Kershaw, though? Speaking of best of what he does, especially during his generation, he played that Cardinals lineup like a game of chess. His 107th career start with zero earned runs, six most in MLB history, going back to 1913, six innings, four hits, two Ks. Top of the fifth, Shohei Otani, and he smoked that pitch like a swisher. 39th home run of the year that leads the National League. MVP on the way, most likely. Here's how it sounded on the Dodgers radio broadcast. Otani hammers one to right. This ball is deep. This ball's gone. It's in the Cardinal bullpen. Shohei Otani. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. And the Dodgers needed that home run because they get it done on the road. 2-1 was the final. Now, I mentioned that's 39 home runs for Otani. He also has 37 stolen bases in just 122 games this season. In case you were wondering, the fewest games to reach 40 and 40 in a season, 147 set by Alfonso Soriano back in 2006 when he was with the Nationals. Otani also, by the way, currently on pace to be the first player with 45 home runs and 45 stolen bases in MLB history. Battle of the Bay. And this is quite literally the last time we can say that. The Bay Bridge series, it ends with the A's headed to Las Vegas, the other sit in West Sacramento. But before we bid adieu, a trip down memory lane with the A's and the Giants and their first interleague game, which was back in 1997. Back then, Mark McGuire played for the Athletics and he homered in an 8-1 win. He was also the only Bay Bridge series McGuire took part in because he was traded to the Cardinals in July of that year. Nearly 10 years later, it was another slugger making history. May the 20th, 2006, Barry Bonds hit 714th homer of his career to tie Babe Ruth, the second most home runs in Major League Baseball history. And do not forget all of the petty. When former A's Cy Young winner Barry Zito returned to the Coliseum in 2007 and he signed a deal with the Giants that offseason, the A's fans, they let him have it. And so did the A's, 15-3. So if you are going to end this series, do it with a flair for the dramatic. Top of the seventh. No one on, no outs, bounce, round one, nothing. Elliot Ramos at the plate. He is gone 448 feet if we need a new baseball to tie it up at one now we go to the bottom of the seventh and Blake Snell is in a bit of a jam Max Schumann the base is loaded swung on that one 55 strikeouts now for Snell in the last five starts which is the most by a Giants pitcher and five inning span our five outing spans since 1901 Cameron as in Daz Cameron next batter it's going to help Snell escape that inning. We are still tied at one. And we stayed that way. So extra, extra. Rara Encarnacion, top of the tenth. He's gone. Two runs scored on that one. It made it 3-1. Now Michael Conforto. Let's go back to back, shall we? Solo shot in front of 32,727 fans. There was also a lot of Giants fans there at the Coliseum, but it was good to see it packed. It was 4-1. A is now down 4-2, Ryan Walker on the mound, and he is going to do his job. The bases were loaded, but no one could do anything. Shay Langoliers is the last out. Giants win the final battle by the Bay, 4-2. So what are we looking at in terms of history here? There were two teams played 148 times during the regular season since interleague play began in 1997. And the A's, they actually hold the slight advantage in the win column. The highlight of this era came eight years earlier before interleague play in 1989 when Oakland brought out the brooms against San Francisco in the World Series. Of course, that was the World Series that was remembered for a whole other reason. Do you remember where you were on October 17th, 1989? I was in my bedroom supposed watching the game. Game three, me too. It was supposed to be game three between the A's and the Giants, but that changed quickly. Candy Maldonado with the hesitation, allowing Jose Canseco to score, and he fails to get Dave Parker at 
second base, so the Oakland A's take take. Tell you what, we're having a great. It was the earthquake, and outside the stadium, just utter de at devastation. It caused the um, Cypress Freeway in Oakland to collapse. 42 people were killed there. The upper level of the Oakland Bay Bridge, that partially collapsed. Candlestick Park, with Millie, well, uh, Willie Mays on hand, I mean, everyone knew what was going on. There were structural cracks at the stadium. Fans were grabbing concrete, and of course, the series was delayed 11 days, and when they went back, after winning a postponed game three and taking a 3-0 series lead in game four, Dennis Eckersley was there to close it out. Butler grounded out for the final out, and the Athletics were able to sweep the Giants, and that is how they won the 1989 World Series. All right, Briscoe Nees back here with you on Sports Center. MLB's Little League Classic game going down in Williamsport. This year, the Yankees and the Tigers been hanging out with the Little Leaguers, and now they get to show off some big league skills. Top of the fifth, pick up the action. Well, first we got. Got Sparky's first. Oh, they did a relay for the ceremonial That's pitch. That's cute. That is cute. All right, that is Parker Meadows. All the way to the wall for extra bases. Jace Young tries to score from first, but Aaron Judge starts to relay. Kind of looked like the ceremonial first pitch, didn't it? Get it all the <laughs> way to the plate. Little leaguers. Oh, that's how we do it. Nice play there from Judge. Fundamental baseballs, which stay scoreless. Top of the six, Juan Soto, Bioblast. Check us out. Former World Series champion, four-time All-Star, all that stuff. And he walks, right? So Team Canada initiate, imitated the Soto shuffle. Look at Booney doing it before the game. Evidently, according to John Butchagross, Booney does great impressions of, like, everybody. Oh, no, he does. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Unaware. So that ball gets away, and Glaber Torres ends up scoring... And that breaks the scoreless tie. Now it's one nothing. Jace Young, brother of Rangers third baseman Josh Young. Also been in um, Major League Baseball for approximately 30 seconds. There you go. But that is a clutch hit right there because it drives in a run to tie the game at one in the bottom of the ninth. So we go to extras. Bottom of the tenth. We're tied at two now. Meadows, game-winning run at second. Here comes the throw, but double clutch by Jason Dominguez and Zach McKinstry wins it. Here's how it sounded on the kids cast from the Little League World Series Classic. Oh. One, two, Dominguez hit the left, base hit. Here comes McKinstry, throw by Dominguez. It is not in time. And the Tigers with a Little League Classic. That was a solid call. That was no way was that the kid. That was a solid call. Well done. Tigers win two in a row from the Yankees. Let's close it out. The weekend series, they win it 3-2 in 10. All right, so Tariq Skubal picked up a no decision, but kept the Tigers in the game pretty much all night. He leads the AL and wins ERA and strikeouts. Looks to become the first pitcher to win the Triple Crown in the American League since Justin Verlander did it back in 2011. You know when someone does you dirty, you yes. want to say bad things to them. Oh, girl, you have no idea. Oh, no, I do. Tested regularly. Uh-huh. Yanner Diaz was tested. Bottom of the first inning between the Astros and the White Sox. There's a runner on first and second. Yanner Diaz, deep to right field. Deep to right. Dominic Fletcher is like, not on my watch. Obviously, Diaz is not happy, but you know who is? Uh, that would be the White Sox broadcasters. This one driven deep to right field. Fletcher looking up at the wall. Oh, what a catch! He robs him in right as Fletcher flashes the glove again. But revenge is a dish best served over the wall. In the sixth, Diaz is at the plate again, and this one is not going to miss. Left field this time, over the wall, easily. Here's how it sounded on the Astros broadcast. Yiner hits one high and deep to left field. There's the first run of the game. Yiner Diaz. Could have been his second in the game. He made this one a no-doubter. 
Okay, so that was a bit of revenge. Show us the final score. Also, they're playing the White Sox, but the Astros won 2 nothing. So extra innings, you like them, huh? I do. Let's get a double dose. D-backs and the Rays. So Tampa led this game at 1.6-0. We're in the top of the eighth now. It's a 6-1 game for Corbin Carroll. Tick, tick, boom. A 422-foot bomb, his 13th of the season. And now it's a 6-3 game. We go to the top of the ninth. Adrian Del Castillo, he's got two on, and he says it ain't over. The party's not over. Second career home run, his first was just nine days ago, and that was a walk-off. So from six down to 6-6, six, six, we head to extra innings. Bottom of the 11th, it's 7-7 seven, seven now, and base is loaded for Justin Martinez. He gets Jose Siri on the check swing. Junior Caminero is up next. He strikes out swinging. Again, base is loaded. Now we got two outs. And then Alex Jackson. Martinez coming through like the rent is due to get out of the jam. So let's go to the bottom of the 12th. Still 7-7. Dylan Carson at the plate. He's got runners at first and third. Thanks for coming out. God bless. Good night. First career walk-off hit for Carlson. Rays win it despite blowing that 6-0 lead early. 8-7 as they hold off the Diamondbacks in extra innings.